Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. To all of my returning subscribers, hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome, kick your feet up, subscribe to this family-friendly channel, and don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss any posts. Also follow me on Instagram at the same profile name so you don't miss the sneak peeks of what's coming up next. In this video, it's Queen Sugar, season five, episode eight, entitled June 3rd, 2020. I give a recap of the entire episode with photos offset to the side and then I give my review at the end. No need to dig around. I have all of the minute marks in the comments. It's all coming up next. Blue unfortunately has a nightmare of the cop harassment from the previous episode. Only the moments are more intense. He has visions of him running away towards his mother for help and then being shot in the back. He awakens to seek comfort from his parents, but he decides to return to bed and tell them nothing. Charlie still lays in her same state, physically frozen, unable to answer her calls or constant banging on the door from Davis. So much so, it forces Davis to break a window so he can get access inside the house. Charlie whimpers and says, no, no, put on your mask. I think I have COVID. And Davis says, oh no, and he puts his mask on and he wants to ask her about her symptoms. Are you okay? Please talk to me. She says that she's having difficulty breathing. He tells her, we've got to flip you over to your stomach so it can help you breathe better. Come on. She says, no, I can't. He's, he's pleading with her. Please just try to get on your stomach. When he finally gets her on her stomach, she gasps for air. He calls a doctor and the doctor asks the symptoms and he says, no, there's no coughing. Uh, she's having difficulty breathing. David says, Charlie, everything will be okay. I'm so glad you called me. I'm here to help. Darlene says, well, Darla, I'm sorry you didn't like my surprise gift. But I thought it was a great and wonderful idea. Blue can attend this awesome school. I mean, with his spectacular IQ and learning, it's one of the best institutions that he can go to. And better yet, he can go with a full ride, honey, a full ride funding for the school. With this racial climate, the school allowed him the legacy tides. And I mean, he's gifted, he's black and they need him. But Darla disagrees. She says that tokenism, the pressure, being unconnected. I mean, I know what that feels like. And I don't want that for my son. Darlene says, you know, he's gifted. Just please, just think about it. Darla says, okay, I think about it. But I mean, I, I just still don't like the idea. Vi and Nova catch up as Vi in the restaurant hangs up presidential and racial injustice posters. And Vi wants to know what's up with you and Calvin. I mean, y'all been booed up over there for months. Y'all getting hitched yet? And Nova says, well, it's been discussed. Kinda. I mean, I don't think we're there yet. How's Hollywood? I mean, do you want to talk about it? Vi says, no, just not now. And by the way, if a man has talked about it and he's expressed his feelings, I mean, he's pretty ready. So you might want to think about that. Davis continues to look after Charlie until the next morning. And he takes her temperature every hour to review the progress as the remote doctor instructed. He says, Charlie, I know you don't want to get up. But doctor's orders, we got to get you in a bed so we can have a better flat surface. She's too weak to get up herself. So he picks her up to carry her. And with a slight whimper, with the breath that she can muster, she says, thank you. Nova relaxes to read a book and listens to music until Calvin returns from his drive back. And Nova says, you know, I'm so glad that you're back. You know, I, I know we put it off, but we should talk about... <laughs> Calvin says, marriage? I mean, it's even hard for you to say the word, huh? <laughs> Okay, so be honest. I mean, do you want to be like Oprah and Stedman? I mean, what do you want? I mean, I get it. I mean, we've been on and off for a while, but we've got to make some decisions. I mean, do you want marriage? 
You know, do I have to put a ring on it like a lot of people say? (laughs) Because I'm ready for it all. But Nova doesn't answer. As Vibe, Prosper, and Blue sit back and read a good book, Vi says, hmm, it's Starla calling me. Let me see what's going on. Hey, baby. Darla says, Miss Violet, it's my mom. Vi said, okay, what's going on? She said, my mom got blue into this, this private school behind my back. I mean, his IQ, his test scores, the fact that he's black is what's getting him into this institution. But I'm just, if I says, well, I mean, do you agree with sending him away? Darla says, no, of course not. I just, I just don't want him to go. Now, Ralph, I mean, he, he thinks it's a good idea. I'm just so angry that she would do this behind my back. I mean, Ralph is considering this. I mean, he really is thinking about it. And he thinks it's the best for Blue. If I says, well, that boy, he loves Blue to the hill and back. That child is not going anywhere. Look, I'll talk to your mom and Ralph. Just, it'll be okay. It'll all blow over soon, okay? I says, you know, thank you, Vi. I mean, I need to hear that, that, that comfort, that... You know, this will blow over and everything will be okay. She says, yeah. Well, I'll call you later. And Darla breathes a sigh of relief. Prosper says, Vi, you know, it'll be okay. They'll work it out. Vi says, you know they're going to work it out because I'm going to help them out. And Hollywood says to Vi, I thought we said we were going to let things be. Vi says, yeah, I know what I said, but... That would have to take a back seat until this is settled. Hollywood looks at her with frustration and being fed up. As Charlie continues to rest, Davis has flashbacks of the hardships of their marriage and him hurting Charlie over and over again. He remembers her tears and how she would ask him, how could you do this to me? After everything I give to you, I give you my all. I think you're the world. I think you're the stars. It's the energy and David feeling remorse and guilt. When Charlie wakes up, David continues to take her temperature every hour. He says, hey, if this temperature doesn't improve, we have to go to the hospital. Charlie says, no, 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 no. We, we we can't do that. He says, look, you're stable now. But if it doesn't improve, it's something that we have to do. Charlie insists that if there's a hospital bed, it's for somebody that, that that's worse and that needs it more than her. Dave says, look, no. If it gets worse, we do what we have to do. I have doctors that are willing to work with us remotely. But if it doesn't get better, we're going to go to the hospital. Charlie wants to get more comfortable in the bed, and she notices that her hair has been pulled back in a ponytail. And she says, did, did, did you do this? He says, yeah, I, I put it in a ponytail, you know, just so the hair won't keep getting in your face. Charlie is speechless because she notices all of the effort that he's putting into to making sure that she's comfortable and says, thank you, has... Has Micah called? He says, yeah, he texted you, and I didn't text him back because that's what you requested. I mean, even though I don't agree with it, I don't agree with that decision. Charlie tech checks her phone, and she sees that Micah has sent her a text, and he's protesting. She says, wow, he looks so happy. I mean, just being so passionate about what he believes in. And David says, yeah, if he had a choice... He would be here. I'm sure he would be right here if he knew. I think you should let him know. I mean, you would want Micah to share that information with you. But it's your decision. I'm going to go make some broth. Vi calls Darlene very angry. And without even saying hello, Vi says, Well, what's this I hear about you taking Blue away from his family? Darlene says, well, hello to you too, Violet. And I'm not taking anyone away. It's only to go to a great school, and it's what he deserves. Besides, 
It's just fluid conversation. We're just talking about it. Vice says, well, you can stop talking about it because it's unnecessary. Getting these kids all riled up. I mean, we get your point. He's smart as a whip and he'll get all of the things that he needs right here. A stronger education where he already is. He's not going anywhere, especially to D.C. You're his grandmother and all, but we're his work. Darlene says, with all due respect, who are you to say so? And Vi says, who am I? I'm the woman that practically raised him when you didn't, couldn't, or wouldn't. You choose one. Darlene says, well, I mean, I sent money. Vi says, yes, and thank you for that. I gave time, you gave money. You can always give more money, but you can't get more time. Darlene says, you're right. Yes, you gave time raising him and thank you. But you didn't give birth to him. My daughter did. And she has the final say so on this. And I says, your daughter who confided in me, that daughter. Blue is not going to deceive. Don't try me on this. Darlene says, you know what? I tried to, but Vi cuts her off and says, don't try me on this. You got the wrong one. And this is not happening. And Darlene says, you know what? Goodbye, Violet. And Vi gets up and says, oh, no, I know she didn't hang up on me in a rage and grabs the phone. But Hollywood stops her screaming, saying, Violet, stop. This woman likely to put a restraining out of order out on you. I mean, you fighting battles that aren't even yours. Now, what's really going on? If I said screaming, I'm not having it. I won't have it, Hollywood. Ralph Angel and Darla discuss Blue and the school situation a little deeper. Ralph thinks that this is Blue's opportunity for better schooling, and they can't keep him home forever. But Darla says, do you really want him under my mother's influence? <laughs> he says, what? <sighs> Your mother, she's smart and she's kind. I mean, we shouldn't close his options. And the schools here don't get all of that good money from the government. Darla is adamant on keeping Blue there. But Ralph sees her frustration as something they can discuss a little bit more later. Charlie awakens to more coughing and difficulty breathing. And Davis comes in to comfort her. But she says, no, please get away. I'm coughing. I don't want you away from the, get away from me. He says, no, I mean, I've already been here for days. It's okay. Whatever will be, will be. I've just got to monitor everything and make sure you're okay. And she begins crying and you can tell it's tears of just frustration, confusion, and sadness. Davis is holding back tears as he continues to pat her on the back and say, everything's okay. I'm here. Everything will be okay. Ralph Angel and Hollywood, they have some guy time to just chill, have a nice drink, and talk about marriage. They joke about how their women are the best in the world, and they keep them on the up and up and give them all the strength and power they need, but at the same time can work a nerve. <laughs> Hollywood says that he needs more brotherhood. Ralph says, yeah, I mean, I can get with that. I mean, after all of this is over, we do need your spot to open back up. A lot of people would love this man. Hollywood says, yeah, without a doubt. They cheers and they share a drink. Vi blindfolds Hollywood and says, I got a surprise for you. Just come on in here. You don't trust me? Come on, trust me. Just follow it in here. Come on, I'll show you the surprise. Okay, now open your eyes. She takes the blindfold off and it's a nice spread of some of his favorite foods. And also the mac and cheese has three cheeses. And specifically the three cheeses and how his mom used to make it. Because it's the same recipe. And Hollywood says, oh baby, thank you. Thank you so much. She says, no. You've been through a lot and I know that you're saying you're okay. But I know you're not okay. And it's alright to admit that. 
we have been through a tough year. Everything that you've gone through with losing your mom, it's a lot. And this year has just felt like a dream. Hollywood says, yes, Lord, definitely a dream. Crazy. She says, you know, with everything going on in the world, we've got to remember that we can wake up in our own world, that we've got to keep each other lifted. I wanted to make this this dinner just to let you know I appreciate you and I love you. And we've just got to continue to communicate and do the best that we can, just me and you. They agree and they share a lovely evening and a wonderful dinner. Nova wakes up in the middle of the night inspired to continue her writing on her article for True Papers. And as she's reviewing her article, she receives an email from Andre Nixon. It's a title about how Andre Nixon paralyzed in beating. Police are accused of paralyzing a college sports star. Vi comes to bed, gets comfortable, and starts to rub lotion on her legs, getting ready to call it a night. Hollywood says, oh, baby, I got that. Grabs the lotion and says, you know, you went in on Darlene. <laughs> After everything, I mean, I can pretty much know she probably deserved it. But when you're ready to talk about what really took you there, we can talk about it. Vi understands where the conversation is going, but from her body language, she's not ready to talk about it. She gives him a little thump on his head to let him know that everything's cool. But talking about that matter, she's just not ready to right now. Charlie continues to dream and think about all the things on her plate. The issues with Queen Sugar Mill, all of the people out to get her, people of the community, situations that happened within her marriage. And then she wakes up. Davis. <gasps> You've been by my side all night? I says, yeah. Good news. Your breathing has improved, so that's, that's progress. That's a good thing. You know what, Charlie? We all need help sometimes. Just know that you're better than last night. And this morning, you're improving. Everything's going to be okay. Charlie says, you know, I was, I was so scared. He says, I know. I was too. Well, you need me to call any of your family? Let them know what's going on? I'm here. Charlie says, no, no, no. Just, if you can, just keep everything that happened between us. I mean, it's for good reason. I mean, I just don't want my family with all the questions and critiques about why are you here? And why didn't I call them? And what's been going on? I just want to sleep. David says, okay, because I can take another nap right now. She's like, oh, no, I can take another nap. As a matter of fact, I can beat you falling asleep. That's how tired I am. He says, okay, let's just rest. How about we both just take a nap? And they both fall asleep quickly. Ralph, Angel, Darla, and Blue, they have some family time playing some pretty competitive Jenga. Blue and Ralph Angel share some trash talking. And Ralph does so much trash talking and dancing, he knocks over the Jenga tower by mistake. He says, you know what? I'll go get us some snacks. He goes into the kitchen, gets ready to pop some popcorn, and he views the school acceptance letter thinks about it, then looks at his family and puts the letter down as if it were an afterthought. Darla enters the kitchen saying, you know what? I love that we're all here together. I mean, after all this time, everything that we've been through, we're finally getting the swing of things. We're all together. We're fine. We're safe. You know, Blue, he doesn't need to leave. I mean, we can find an institution here that's going to challenge him. He can stay here. 
He won't leave, right? Ralph Angel sees the joy from his wife. And after hearing her speak about being together and how she's feeling, he hugs her to show that that decision is best. And that is the end of the episode. Another amazing episode, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to the full episode recap and the review. It's a review time, so it's really heartbreaking. But it's something that I mentioned a couple of seasons ago when it came to the character of Charlie. I said that unfortunately, she doesn't know how to stop. And with a lot of people in life, right? You don't know how to stop. Your body will tell you when to stop. It's unfortunate. But I honestly think um, one of the viewers now that I'm thinking about it, one of the viewers on the channel guesstimated that Charlie had COVID. But I actually think it could be one or more things that Charlie contracted COVID and uh, was able to overcome it at home without going to the hospital because we have seen that medically in a lot of cases. Some A lot of people contract COVID and it's, it's severe, but not to the point to where they need to be on a ventil ventilator at the hospital. They recuperate at home, but that percentage is very small. And also it could just be her body absolutely worn out from stress and anxiety. I think it was actually both. If it was COVID, it to me, it kind of seems pretty slim because she's been quarantined. And the only time that I can really think about where she was around a large quantity of people was when they protested. One of the things to understand which is something that could be brought up in a discussion about this this pandemic is that a lot of people have to understand that you have a mask on, but it's not necessarily like you're completely away from the possibility of contracting it, right? Cotton and certain materials can slow down the ingestion or contraction, right? Getting it processed. The more people that you're around, increases those chances even with a mask on even if you're not even if you are six feet away the more people that are around you you are you are increasing those chances um there could be could have been a possibility of just i'm just saying in general not just the show where the mask comes down and you touch it and you pull it up when you're around more people you're increasing those chances of possibly getting that virus OK, so I think that's something that they brought up very well in this episode. So I don't think anybody making a guess about whether she had COVID or if it was just stress and everything together had an effect on her body because we have medical evidence. And if it's stress and, and anxiety, it can wreak havoc on your breathing, your sleeping, depression on everything. So I think Charlie had a, a big whammy of it all. But if she got COVID, I'm just, I just want to know when, like where, because she was just so careful in always keeping her mask on and not going anywhere. So if she did contract it, I would guess maybe that was a good possibility was at the protest. Um, for me to see Charlie and Davis together, I'm still mad at Davis from seasons ago. Okay. I'm still mad when he was pl still playing pro ball and all this stuff he did in the past. Right. I'm still, I'm still mad at that. I don't know if that's the Aries in me where I'm just like, I let stuff go. But it's like, once you cross that line, honey, it's just like point of no return. Where are you going? Why are you around me? But, you know, like a lot of people think, you know, they're afraid of the hospital. They're afraid of getting into a situation and making it, making it worse. All the stories that we've heard, especially through 2020 and the ERs and the, the areas being full to capacity and nowhere to go. You know, I can understand the thinking of I would rather just stay at home. Like I would just rather stay at home and just wait until we can't wait anymore and ride this thing out, see if we can handle ourselves, then go to the hospital. A lot of people thought that way because places were out of 
at capacity. I mean, the, the units were just out of control. I don't know what state you were in, but in the state I was in, it was a catastrophe. It was just too many people that were actually in the processes of uh, having medical tents set up because it was really, really bad. So it was beautiful that they brought that up with the creativity, with the writing and, and it not being so pressed to a specific point but brought up a lot of things to discuss when it comes to the pandemic when it comes to family when it comes to people that you need it's obvious that there's still love from charlie and davis it's obvious it's just so much hurt and there's so much pain that happened in that marriage that just forced it to end it, it was just like to just just charlie was just hurt so much from inf infidelity and the lies and, and and the side babies that he was just he was just she was just done that's understandable but the fact that he came to her aid and the scenes where he's sitting there reflecting thinking about all of those times that he hurt her and seeing her in such a weak state because he used to seeing her strong he used to seeing her handle it all he's used to seeing her just very independent and to see that it was just a reflections of reflections of everything they had been through and the guilt you could see the guilt in his face it was wonderful acting because you could just read it through his eyes even with the mask on so i thought that was actually beautiful with blue situation when it comes to schooling there's so many different things going on when it comes to this child and the adults in his life need to be very careful how they take it on from there i'm an example of a child who was very gifted when it came to schooling and montessori schools and and skipping grades ahead and always uh with that oh you got a genius child and i remember my mother being very very cautious on those next steps and considering happiness and the focus on being just a kid right but of course that's just my parents right a lot of people may see it differently and we have to see this in three different parts the first part is with Violet. Violet, unfortunately, is very obvious from her trauma in the past and her losing her child from domestic violence um, and the potential of having more children is obviously connected at the hip and emotionally with Blue because there was a connection that that was her child. It was very obvious that she's not the mother. But to have those responsibilities of helping family and helping Ralph Angel and Darla through their critical time and stepping in as family and taking care of Blue, clearly she has a connection as if she's the mom because of her trauma. And Hollywood knows what's up. He just wants her to talk about it because the anger and the frustration that she had with speaking with Darlene was was whoa was way over the top right i mean anyone would get upset if you have your connect like why well, you gotta go away to washington and what's supposed to deal you gotta go to dc and all that stuff but she was filled with absolute rage and that is something that hollywood clearly wants her to talk about clearly wants her to get out we also have to look at it from darla and ralph angel's perspective within their marriage they're split about this matter Ralph Angel is so focused on seeing his family happy. He wants to be cautious about how he says certain things. You can tell that he wants his son to go to this school because it's a great opportunity and he's just so smart. And he's thinking that the institutions that are where they are probably are not up to par with this institution. So why not give him the best? Being a father and being more kind of lenient with letting the child fly out of the nest compared to the mother is understandable darla on um, again breaking it down to her point she's lived and had an unfortunate situation and, and derailing of her life of the pressure and things being so perfect and and her mom setting up all of these things to do to where it kind of pushed her away from family pushed her away from school and welcomed the influence of, of, of unfortunately of substance abuse so she's tying in her emotion with being a very good student and the pressure of that knowing that the tokenism that she mentioned feeling unconnected 
she's tying that in with her experiences and also have to make sure that Ralph Angel isn't vicariously living through blue as well because he looked at the letter as if he had been accepted to the school like he was looking at it so deeply like oh I wonder if I should go you know so we have to really ooh, kind of really just talk about it more I mean they're having they're newlyweds right they're having these little oh well, well everything's fine when they need to really sit down with paper and pen and hash out the pros and the cons of their son going to this institution going to this wonderful prestigious private school and it may take them getting through that it may take them having a couple of arguments but it's necessary to make that known and to make that a decision as parents and also what's important uh, blue is smart they need to have that conversation with him uh, they're just not, they're tippy-toeing around it. Being being newlyweds, not wanting to argue, wanting everything to be okay, and everybody's okay, but it's not okay. These are very, very important questions that we have to, to that they have to talk about, and uh, the pros and cons. Also, the mother, Darlene. And see, from her perspective as well, she has to tippy-toe and watch her boundaries as well. She already went behind Darla's back to submit everything, which was a huge no-no. Uh, and, and being controlling. Her intent was probably great, but she wasn't considering speaking with the parents first. Because she could have waited. She could have waited to speak with Blue's parents. But also, again, is she seeing this as a vicariously living through Blue situation? My daughter got derailed. So can we try this again with Blue? So everybody has these lens, right? That they're looking through from their perspective, their viewpoint. But we have to remember, you guys, this is critical thinking with this writing. That everybody's feelings, all these adult feelings, they need need to consider the child the most important thing is blue all of these opinions swirling around his little head and they need to consider blue and how will it affect blue and what's best for blue and not their feelings right i loved the scene with ralph angel in hollywood just having just a moment with the with the guys right because a lot of people would think that it's just women who need to have those deep talks and kiki ki about things and express their feelings but that companionship when it comes to brotherhood is needed just as much them saying that this is refreshing we're able to talk about things that we feel as husbands and being excited to get everybody together virtually which is something that I forgot to mention in the last scene is that Hollywood speaks with Vi about how he wants to get the brotherhood together and speaking with Ralph Angel was very important and with that even though they can't physically go to the facility he wants to have virtual discussions with men which I think is a wonderful idea because those men will have a wonderful outlet and that would be beautiful to see in the episode so pardon me for leaving that that part out but that's just like a few lines that I left out of that part because it just just I just remembered it as I was speaking about it but that was necessary it was their moment to vent it was their moment to just talk and not be critiqued about anything and just to purge their feelings so I thought that was really beautiful amazing writing this season was this season is absolutely draining emotionally because we're thinking about what happened last year and we're still recuperating from that only we're not through it yet but we're still we're still dragging on what's going on with this whole pandemic and this whole situation but let me know what you think about this episode and let me know your thoughts on my review do you agree do you disagree about some things make sure that you leave your comments below also check out other shows you guys that are on this channel it's family friendly so feel free to share with any and everybody have the confidence knowing that it won't be anything on the channel um that that's you know that would rub somebody the wrong way you know it's just just reviews and, and and talks also check out the playlist let's talk because that playlist let's talk has more pop culture 
in it and important topics. Also check out the health and wellness playlist about health, mental health, uh, just taking care of yourself. So also check out those two playlists as well and check out the shows Ready to Love. That season is just starting and if you didn't get to watch last season, that's okay. I got everything in the in the comments below on some other shows you may want to watch. Get ready Saturday, April 10th begins the Iyana, the final six episodes you guys the final six episodes of Iyana Van Zandt of Iyana Fix My Life if you have not seen the first six episodes right or the first episodes of the season make sure that you check that out because the final six episodes a lot of them are the part twos of the ones that that we need more information of okay so the beginning of the season a lot of Iyana episodes are part ones so these finals episodes final six episodes are the part twos okay so to just get an update about everything that's going on and what to expect to the end of this season make sure that you check out that as well don't worry about it don't dig for it i'll put that link below as well in the meantime in between time take care of yourself and others oh and also get ready in april april 20 i think it's april 24th to 28th we have the handmaid's tale an amazing show it's won tons of Emmys, you guys. I think they've won like 13 Emmys, okay? And that's just so far. <laughs> you know, there's plenty of other awards that they've won as well. It's probably more than 13 Emmys by now. Yeah, I, I think so. But make sure you check that out, you guys. The writing is absolutely amazing. Make sure that you binge watch so you can get ready for this next season of The Handmaid's Tale because it does not disappoint. So take care of yourself and each other. There's only two episodes left of Queen Sugar. So if you have not caught up, make sure that you binge watch this playlist so you can get ready for the final two. All right, you guys. Love you. See you next week. Um, bye.